Uh, welcome to uh, Michigan's version of the Big Ten Tape Room. Uh, we're really excited about uh, about kind of talking about what we do with uh, specific things in our program. Uh, today, we're actually talking about the how we use the pick in our offense, and uh, pick is short for back row quick. Um, and so we'll be talking about that and, and kind of how we use it in our in our uh, offense. We're uh, joined today with one of our players who does this very, very well, Paige Jones, uh, was a sophomore All-American, unanimous All-Big Ten this past year. And we use her a lot on the on the pitch within our offense. So she'll be able to give us some some in uh, insight from within the, within the court rather than uh, just from the outside court. So welcome, Paige. Thanks, excited to be here. A couple of things with the with the big for us. It's, this is a, a play we run out of the back row. Uh, we don't do it as a bailout. This is part of our system. You know, we actually run this in system when we have a, a good dig or a good pass where we have other options we could run. This is a choice we make, not a not just a back row bailout when things are are out of system. Um, you know, a big thing for us is speed. We want to make sure that it goes quick. There's a difference between a back row set. Sometimes we might throw a back row ball up. Uh, just to uh, to bail out, but that's going to be a lot higher and a lot uh, a lot more controlled. This is going to be much faster. Um, it's really a quick tempo where the hitters are the hitters are into their approach when the setters got their hands on the ball. Um, you know, we actually run this a little different than some teams. We don't run it to a set place on the court. We actually move the uh, the bick depending on where our setter goes, and that's all related to trying to keep it fast. If we uh, we feel like if we can keep the set with the the setter. Now it's going to be quicker to the hitter's hand. So uh, that's something. And it, it really forces our hitters to be doing the adjustment. And we'll talk a lot about that. And you'll see Paige uh, do that in, you know, on video where she has to make that adjustment. Um, the goal for this whole, the whole goal for, for us running this in our offense is to put pressure on the opponent's middle blocker. You know, we want them to feel pressure, even when the dig maybe or the pass isn't perfect in the middle of court where we could run maybe a quick attack with our middle. We still want that middle blocker to feel pressure and have to stay more in the middle of court, which now allows all of our hitters a better chance to be one-on-one, -on -one, which is our setter's goal, get our hitters in a one versus one situation. Um, another thing that's key with this is we're not only going to set it fast, we're going to set it close to the net. Our, our hitters really do a good job of, of launching, of, of jumping from behind the 10-foot line and hitting this ball well into the, uh, the attack zone, not, not on the 10-foot line. They're hitting it more like on the five or six-foot line and landing almost to the net. Um, this is also something we found to be very, very effective when other teams are committing. Uh, when they start commit blocking, like let's say uh, one of our outside hitters is kind of hot and, and they're starting to commit their middle blockers to go block our outside hitter, this is a really effective set to force them not to be able to do that. So Paige, I'm actually going to start with a question for you. You ran, a, you know, we recruited you out of high school, New Bremen High School, state champions in Ohio. Uh, you hit a lot out of the back row. Um, what was different about how you hit on the back row in high school and then what you're running here uh, in Bix at, at Michigan? Um, yeah, so in high school, it was more of a high loopier set in college, obviously. We're setting at like, if you want to think front row, probably one and a half tempo. Um, so yeah, high school, it was just like a high outside type of set, but to the back row. And then I played left back in high school. So I also, I hit in a spot, not following a setter or anything like that. So um, I would always hit out of the blue zone or left back zone. Yeah, it'd be a lot tougher to uh, to follow the setter from that left back spot. It's one of the reasons we have our outside is playing middle back is one, they're good middle back defenders, but also it allows them to track the setter and to really line up with them to be able to run this offensively. So yeah, that's that's good, good insight. Um, so Paige, are you more comfortable hitting out of the back row, the front row, or is it about even? Um, I'd say it's about even. I think I like hitting out of the back row more just because I don't want to say it's more unexpected, but that's not really usually on the blockers prior to mine. So most of the time you don't have a blocker up. So I think it's always more exciting to hit out of the back row. Yeah. And what we find with, with, uh, you know, the last few years with you, Carly Scott, Sydney Wetterstrom, you, you guys tend to hit a higher hitting percentage out of the back row than you do out of the front row. And your, your front row percentage is pretty good. But uh, probably because of that blocking matchup and a little bit of that deception that uh, and also more angles to hit at, you know, you guys are actually hitting a higher percentage. So certainly one of the reasons we're doing it. So, well, it's the tape room. Let's get into some video here. This is our first clip. Uh, we'll go ahead and play it fast and then we'll, uh, we'll slow it down and, and talk a little bit about it.
Paige, is that one of those ones you talk about that you like where not too much are blocked there? Yeah. <laughs> so you'll notice, Paige, when this ball is passed, as soon as the ball is passed, Paige is trying to line up with where that pass and the setter is going to be. So she's starting out of uh, service Eve. She slides over. But as this set gets to the setter, you'll notice she shifts to her right. Uh, we really want her to do and our hitters to do the work at the top of their approach up here at the at the beginning of it rather than adjusting as they jump. And so she does a great job of lining up. And you'll notice this set's going to be right in line with the setter. So it's not uh, it's not away from the setter. It's right. We use the term it's on the setter. Um, so she's coming to her. So as the ball set, she's already well into her approach. You know, Paige is already moving. So she's that's another reason we like to set it with the setter is Paige can know where that ball is going to be. Um, when she's leaving and, and the tempo that it's going to be at. So we notice the blockers over here, the, the other, other team's left side blocker has already bailed out to go block the slide. Um, the middle blockers kind of cheated a little bit to the, uh, the right, to, against our left side, to their right. And so it's opening up a gap that, that's going to be really open for, for Paige to swing through. You'll notice too, it's hard in this set for the diggers to get deeper uh, in the court to dig this, which also creates another situation. If it's fast enough, they can't drop step. And so that ball gets up high on them pretty quick. So good kill page. Like it. Thanks. <laughs> Here's one with Carly Scott in transition. So this is defensive transition. Uh, you know, notice again, she's playing middle back defense and so she's going to make the dig here. But as soon as she makes the dig, she's thinking of attack. She's loading up with the attack. Our other hitters are getting in position to attack as well. But Carly's coming right down the middle. And great thing with back row, like, Paige, is it easier for you to transition attack when you're a back row player or a front row player? A ton. A lot easier in the back row just because you're pretty much already there unless you have to dive for a ball. You're already up and you have, a, like, longer distance, I guess. To, but with the ball in the air, you got the longer distance to figure out where you need to go. Yeah, so we can really use that back row as a, a good, strong attacker when everybody else is having to really get off the net. They're already there. So Carly, you'll notice she's already into her approach, well into her approach. By the time Max sets the ball, she's already into her last two steps or going into her last two steps. But she's lined up well with Max. She's coming right at her. And the other team's pin blockers have bailed to go with their, their attackers. Now we're left with a one-on-one -on -one situation. And look at the libero. She's not able to get deep enough. So this is going to be a really hard ball for her to dig because it's deep in the court. So good effective pick there, very quick tempo. Next one we got Paige coming out of transition. Again, she loads really well. So this is a good example of the ball's dug. It's a good dig, but it may be a tough ball for us to run a one with, a quick with our middle, even though she's getting up there and trying to be an attacker. You know, that's going to put two blockers right on her. But by running this BIC, it allows us to still keep something quick in the middle of court. Paige is doing a great job of loading. Their other blocker bailed, and now she's got a gap to hit into. This is actually a cool example. This is what we call an overload. So we've got all of our attackers in transition are actually staying in front of the setter. So we've got a left side pages on the left side hitting on the pin. We've got Kayla running a 31 in the gap. Um, and then Carly's coming down the middle for, for a big. So everybody's on basically one half of the court and it creates an overload. You'll see number 16, the middle for, uh, for the other team. She's got to step over and get in front of Kayla. You know, that's her responsibility. And she actually even jumps with her. And now it leaves Carly hitting one-on-one -on -one against a small left side blocker, that's, that's a mismatch. As we see this develop, you've got a real mismatch between an attacker and a blocker, and there's no way the right side blocker can help. The middle's already in there with the quick. So this overload situation's worked really well to put us in a great, a great situation. This is the other team giving us a free ball. And if you notice, their setter is having to huck across the court here. You know, and, and I know Paige is out here going, hey, set me the ball because there's no blocker. But also, if you notice their middle blocker, number 20, she realizes the situation as well. So she starts cheating big time over to help in that situation. And that opens up a great situation for the Beck. We'll see it in slow motion here. You know, setter's on the ground. She's scrambling. Mac probably identified that right there. She could set to page, but 20 starts cheating to help out the, the other blocker. 
leaves nobody out. It's another great example where we can keep something quick, even though the dig is, you know, 11 feet off the net. This is about as deep as we'd ever want to run the back row ball. We don't like the, the bit. We don't want to run it when we're way off the net. But, you know, if she shoots a one in here, that's going to be a mismatch for, for our hitter. That blocker is going to be all over a, a one that's going to get shot in or a 31. But we can still keep a quick option with Paige coming right down the middle of the court. And now the blockers aren't very well formed. They're reaching to fill that hole. Paige, do you feel in a situation like that, do you feel like, you know, you're probably going to be the option because the set's not perfect? Um, yeah, uh, especially when, like, because we preach on, like, digging 10-foot lines. So I know that we can still run a fast offense then. But obviously, you don't want to – you can shoot in a 31 ball or an outside. It's kind of hard to set back, I think. But – I think when you're at that spot, pushed a little to the four zone, I feel like that's when you know that you're one of the main op like options because you can still run it quick. You don't have to shovel it high to the outside. Good, good point, really good point. Well, this is an interesting situation here. So we talked about the set always being on the setter. We have one other option and that's where the hitters will, uh, will kind of identify a situation where they, they use the term off. And so they'll call to the setter off. And this is basically when the middle runs a one and they feel like, hey, it's going to be a little congested in here. I'm going to land on top of that middle. And so as the play's developing, you'll see Kayla runs a one right in front of the setter. We're in a 6-2 here, so there's three hitters. She can't really get behind the setter. So she runs this one. Well, Carly will call off. And so now Mac knows to set that ball just off of the hitter's left shoulder. And so now it gives Carly space to land. Kayla's coming in for a one. Carly sees that, and she just took a quick step to her left. She's calling off. And now that ball gets set just a little bit to the left. Obviously, a great situation for her to have no blockers, but also she's got plenty of room to land and not be in trouble. Paige, how, uh, how, was that a difficult process to learn how to read those situations? Um, yes, very, <laughs> especially when – I mean, our middles try their best to like communicate early um, with which hit or like set they're gonna do, but they don't wanna tell the middle blocker on the other side, hey, I'm going here, like come block me. So that was definitely something that we started to work on just announcing that middle hit earlier. So then we in the back row had an easier time trying to pick which way we needed to go. Yeah, there was certainly a period of time when we were developing this concept that we, we felt like maybe this isn't gonna work. And then you guys just started getting it. You know, I think they just started reading off each other. It's kind of like football quarterbacks and wide receivers reading the same situation and reacting to it. And, and it actually got, you know, it got to be pretty smooth. But that's a testament to you guys working, working really hard at it. I love this clip because it shows, again, how everybody's involved in this process. Everybody knows it's coming. So if you watch this develop, Carly's going to run this ball down, uh, you know, right, right on the setter. But watch what our, our right back defender, Natalie Smith, what she does here. She's in, involved in the play. She makes the dig. But watch her next move here. She knows that there's a back row ball coming right on top of that setter. So she immediately bails out. Then she comes back into cover. But that's not knowing the situation and knowing what's happening. Again, Paige, we probably had some challenges with that when we first started this and had to figure out how to work through it. But – yeah, definitely. This is another one where, where uh, Corey does a great job of pulling a blocker up, and it just creates a situation where there's, there's no way they can get an effective block. Uh, you see the left side blockers bailing out to go to her hitter. Corey's, you know, we've set Corey a lot probably early in this match, uh, really established her. They got two blockers trying to stop Corey, and now we can come right down the middle. And, again, it takes their commit on Corey away from them. This is actually a really, really cool thing that we had to develop as well. So now we're in a 6-2, so we've got three hitters in the front row. Um, but the ball gets pushed to the right sideline. We call that zone two. So you'll watch what happens. Car Carly does a great job of tracking the dig. It's over on the right sideline. She shifts. She does a great job of working at the top for approach. But as we started doing this, we realized this set coming out of the setter's hands looks almost identical to the middle back who's hitting the bick but also the right side hitter who's, um, who's hitting 
a rip. And so we had to work this out because the first couple of times, Paige, you remember what happened the first couple of times we had like collision central and frustration because nobody knew who that ball was. So Paige, why don't you share how we worked that out and, and how they communicate that? Um, yeah, so it's actually all about verbal communication. Um, Mac would say whose name she was sending it to. So it was just all about us, like between the right side and our BIC, just listening to what Mac is intending to set. So it's just all about verbal communication. Yeah, and you'll see like they're both staged to hit right now. But as soon as this ball set, you'll watch what Sid, our right side, our opposite does. She just stops because she knows this ball's to Carly. Steps out of the way, and Carly's got no blocker. Um, so yeah, that was actually one effective way. They just again, we had to we we saw problems as we developed this, and we had to create ways to uh, to solve those problems. But a testament to the players, I think most of the time they probably came up with these systems themselves and helped us to organize them uh, to to make it work. So Paige, last thing I'm going to ask you is, what's your favorite? big situation to hit in what do you what do you like the most or what what kind of gets you excited in the middle of play um i feel like definitely transition instead of out of serve receive because when you're in serve receive the blockers are like for sure set up ready to move any direction but i feel like transition is probably a little harder for the blockers on the other side to like read so i just feel like any type of dig to transition type of play is probably my favorite. Yeah, outstanding. Yeah, and I, I think it is, it allows us to stay very fast in transition. Those front row players have to come off the net stage and then be ready to approach versus our back row player, they're already back there loaded up. So it can be a really fast transition situation. And you're right, I think it does create a whole nother layer of problems for the blockers. So, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, the, the tape room here. We enjoyed doing it and uh, look forward to seeing everybody on the court in, uh, in the near future. Go Blue. Go Blue.